morning. This presentation is actually very timely for me because a year ago, Cisco hired me specifically um, to lead social media strategy for our corporate social handles. And one of the first things that I had to do in my role, unfortunately, was to fire our social media agency. Um, and over the course of the next 15 minutes, what I'd like to do is explain to you and share a little, a few of our skeletons in our closet as to why we had to fire them, which was a hard thing to do, and why we hired a new agency and, and why that is. Um, in particular, it was because of the way that our agency was responding, that is specifically why we had to, had to fire them. It's noisy out there. We all know it. There's nothing in here that probably I will tell you that is necessarily new, but how many of you can even get through this meeting, my 15 minutes, without looking at your phone? How many of you, <laughs> how many of you multitask through, through your, um, your conference calls? Um, I am, your phone, your emailing, it's, it's hard to pay attention, and that's us. The, and think about, the, think about it, it's the same with our customers, our partners, our influencers. This statistic is what makes our job compelling. We are so relevant with what we have to do and what we're charged with doing, and it's such an exciting time. And of course, we all know, and I don't even believe this, this is a 2014 statistic. I think it, it must be at least at 100% at this point. Um, with that social engagement and how important it is for moving our brand message forward. So if we want to talk about that whole um, engagement piece and, and how you respond with an agency, can I see a show of hands real quickly? Who here is on the agency side? It is bright. And then brand and vendors. Okay, so we've got a really good, a lot of vendors and I would say about a, a quarter um, a, a each on the others with the um, brands and the agencies. So hopefully this will be helpful to you with, with um, what I'm taking you through. When we did an audit of our, um, how we were responding, it turns out that we were responding to everything very willy-nilly, and I, I hate to admit that, being from Cisco, um, but we are a $50 billion company with 70,000 employees. We have thousands of products. We have so many things that we could say and so many things that we were saying. And so the very first thing that we did was a team huddle to figure out what the heck is it that we want to say from our corporate social handles and what is our purpose and why are we doing this and why are we on social anyway and is that coming through to our audience? So ultimately in a very simple way, we decided that we wanted to inspire our audiences to imagine a future with possibilities. For crying out loud, we are a company that changes economies of scale. We change the way countries do technology and their backbone, and it's incredible what our company can do. And, and we were focusing all over the map, let's inspire. I know this sounds so simple, especially to this, to this group here, but we were responding to everybody on everything, and so we said, who are we going to focus on? Because we have a lot of social handles at Cisco, and we're gonna let them, if you're enterprise networking, if you're mobility, you talk to your folks. We're gonna talk to our influencers. So we came up with five profiles, and to be honest with you, the opinion leader and the IT executive and CXO, those really are our primary our primary target, but when it comes to some of our other really fun content, the specialist, the developer, and the tech enthusiast, they're the ones who are also responding to our content. We had to come up with a social voice, and probably all of you have done this already, but we needed to determine exactly what it is when we are responding, how are we going to respond in a consistent way, not only from the corporate social handles, but all of the different multiple, the countries, the, the uh, marketing groups, the people who have those you know, niche verticals. So as a, as a leading, you know, having a hub and spoke model, we said, okay, Cisco, if we're gonna say something, it needs to fit into one of these four buckets. We're an innovative, disruptive, relevant, and trustworthy. And if you don't see that from our social handles, then it, it doesn't belong on there. 
because we need to inspire with, with these four tones and brand voice. So content pillars, um, I, I saw Beth from Barilla was talking about this earlier. Um, Barilla, by the way, where if Beth is here, is my favorite brand. Um, a future imagined disruptive ideas and geek humor, of course, does well. I mean, we are a geek audience, let's be honest. And for those of us who are in technology, we're either all the way out there, admit to the fact that we're geeks or we're closet geeks. And I come from a long line of engineers, so um, I was born into geekdom. Um, disruptive ideas, it's not a new concept at all. In fact, our CEO and probably every CEO in the country is saying that if you don't disrupt yourself and your industry, then you're not gonna be here in another five or 10 years because you've got a full class of millennials who are coming out and ready to disrupt you. So as far as our new team is concerned, we uh, ultimately hired Golan, who, uh, this is not meant to be a Golan um, commercial, but I can't say enough about how they partner with us. So I consider them an extension, or actually part of my team, um, because we are a small but mighty team at Cisco, and managing the corporate social handles is a huge responsibility, and we need to make sure that we have a lot of very senior savvy people who are um, our extended team. So we have the strategy lead, but on the Golan side, our project manager came over from American Airlines and understands brand and brand voice very, very well. And what I love about what they are doing for us is, um, is that they bring us best practices and they're able to help us break out of that whole Cisco uh, mindset because sometimes in large companies we talk to ourselves too much and we start drinking our own Kool-Aid um, and and forget that other people have no idea what we're talking about listening is critical I obviously don't need to tell you that but uh, what I have been hearing over the course of the last day and a half so far is this idea of a, an actual agency room or team uh, Cisco our uh, Golan calls theirs the bridge, and it's like a newsroom, and we have somebody who's listening 24-7 to the conversation. Now, th this can be a bit of a speed trap because there's a lot of great conversations that are going on that we could participate in. So yesterday, for example, there was um, friendship. I forget the exact hashtag that it was, but it was a friendship conversation, and we decided to engage in it, but every single day, there is a trending conversation that we could be a part of, but if we did, we would be scrambling every single day and forget our core values and remember that we're here to inspire. So we like to make sure that we're covering the people who, who are the tech enthusiasts, who are the IT middle manager, but we still have to remember that our core audience is that, is that CXO. And this becomes really important because we've determined a what we call an evergreen list with actual names to say these are the people we want to listen to, we want to make sure that we get our content to them and engage with them. Um, on the real-time opportunities, they're, they're very quick turnaround. They give us social copy and graphics as soon as we say yes, and a lot of times they're turning it around in less than 30 minutes to an hour um, so that we can capitalize on that conversation. And, and again, I heard um, Beth say, you know, that craft, they'd missed that opportunity. For us, we uh, are a different department than Cisco.com, and so it's not, and our advertising department. So we either need to capitalize on the social conversation or, or get out. And there have been times where we're like, you know, we don't have the bandwidth today to get involved in that conversation. Real-time content is top performing. Um, we, like I said, we've got nerds. And so, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it says talk nerdy to me. Um, it, it's crazy what people respond to. Um, as a big Star Trek fan, this was, we all, everybody wanted to do something when um, Leonard Nimoy passed away. And this was a top performing com uh, conversation and um, piece just because of our audience and I think because a lot of us are Star Trek fans. Um, things like uh, we have, what is this, the uh, St. Patrick's Day and Pi Day, those are the type of things that, bring, that I know, help me know real time that my audience and my geeky audience is listening because you would not imagine how much this gets shared. 
And the beauty of it is, is that we, can, we are slipping in um, conversation pieces where we, the, of content that we want for them to see. Now, on the, on the other side of our house, we have a team that produces content. We have two NBC, former NBC producers. Um, they were each at NBC for 15 years, and the kind of content that they are producing is so compelling. Fantastic videos, fantastic thought leadership pieces. In fact, we have a leadership series of our top executives. It, we call them the OC, the Operating Committee. They are the folks who actually run the company, and those are some really popular videos. And when we have top, um, when we do real-time engagements and, um, and capitalize on it, a lot of times we'll put in that type of content in there as well to give somebody an action item to click through and something more fun. Um, I, I didn't real, I'm sorry I didn't realize that, uh, what the room would look like, so I'm sure you probably can't see this. Uh, but this is just really us reaching out to our, our audiences with that content. And then, of course, measuring, um, measuring. And our numbers are not going to be as big, probably, as yours, especially as a B2B. And that's something that we're looking at growing right now, now that we've turned the ship. And for those of you who are in a large company, if you've ever had to turn the ship from like chaos to order, um, it, you probably will understand our numbers. And I'm hoping next year we will have doubled that. But, the, but for us, numbers aren't necessarily important as so much as who those numbers are. And then uh, finally, just leave you with uh, top 10 tips for, the, um, for responding with your agency and partnering with them in a strategic way is uh, number 10, obviously measure, and, and measure results and repeat. It's a no-brainer, I think, for this room. And the key influencers, again, I, I can't emphasize it enough, at least at Cisco, how many influencers we have. And so for us, it was really honing down that list from thousands and millions down to a really small list of the people we were going to focus on who are really going to move the needle for our reputation management. Amplify real time with, um, with content that's and paid. Be ready for key events. Um, our holiday graphics do really well. Our pi, you know, pie day does really well. And this may seem you know, s simple, um, but the opportunity, uh, opportunity again is is so vast that I think it's really important when you're, that you take a look at your strategy to make sure that you hone it down to what's going to be that key, key events and the key holidays, not everything. Humor does really well with everybody. Um, take risks. We have to be disruptive. Take risks. Take risks. Be authentic. Um, I know that this probably seems really simplified to you, but it's something that we at Cisco had to do over the past, um, past year. So I encourage you to also be authentic with your audiences as you're figuring out the next big thing. Um, capitalize on those appropriate opportunities. Listen actively, um, especially to those top influencers and what they're saying and how they're saying it. And then finally, know your audience. Because I will tell you, when I first started a year ago, we didn't know our audience. And like I said, it's a little bit embarrassing to admit that from Cisco. Um, but now that we know our audience, we're really moving the needle. So I've got a couple minutes to take questions if there are any. See one in the back. Hi. Um, you guys have tens of thousands of employees, as you noted. Yes. Which is an amazing, and, and they all have Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and everything else. And so there's a huge opportunity to have them create content to, uh, you know, on the brand's behalf. Have you figured out a strategy to activate your employees to talk about the brand on social yes. and get messaging to them that they can put out? Yes, so how? we have. Yeah, so we have what's called the social ambassadors. And the way we're set up at Cisco is we have social media communications team, which manages the corporate handles in global corporate communications. That's where I sit. And then social media marketing. And they're responsible for customer and partner relationships and revenue generation. And they have that group, social ambassadors, that we're helping them to grow. And we get content to them every single week to make sure that they are leveraging it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big, they're, they're big. That was one of the first things I wanted to do was plug into that. And actually, one of the other responsibilities was to, for me was to create alignment um, globally and w with our marketing partners because there wasn't such a great relationship. And now we've got this really great relationship. And I think it has to do with a couple key people just saying, we're all, we're all moving together in the same direction, and we'll do whatever we can Like from us. It benefits us to help them um, move this forward. So the social ambassadors have been huge for us. Mm -hmm. 
Are there any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if you heard the question, but it was, is there any pressure to sell um, or are we just, or just shaping the conversation? So we're doing both. Uh, so because we manage the corporate handles, we still have outside, internally within Cisco, we have uh, outside stakeholders. So we do have to, you know, there's advertising that has to come in. So that's created by the advertising team, but there's also a lot of requests that come in that we just say no to. Um, so we, we're the gatekeepers to it, to make sure that we are keeping it at the thought leadership level. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, I guess this is a little bit in regards to what you spoke about and what Beth spoke about, but coming from a financial institution, highly regulated, I'm very curious as to the legal aspects of when you're posting about you know, Star Wars or you know, she was talking about Madonna, things like that. I know in CPG and other places it's a little bit easier, but how do you work with your legal team in order to you know, ease the ag agility of it? So the only place that we really need to work with our legal team is on earnings. We just started tweeting out earnings uh, two quarters ago, and we work very tightly with them on that. But to be honest with you, we don't go, part of it is our corporate culture. Uh, we have a badge, and maybe everybody does, but we have a badge of, of all the things that we are. And one of the things on there is we do the right thing. And so one, one of the things that Cisco will, doesn't do by the nature of our corporate culture is go way outside the lines of what could or couldn't be legal. So, because we've done this internally, like, can we do this, can we not? It's, and, and I've always said no if it's a gray. Um, and then there's other areas where there's, there's conversations we just don't engage in. It's, we basically take a stand down approach. And so it may be worthwhile talking to some of the consumer um, B2C brands where they have to be a lot more edgy. For us, edgy is the geek humor that um, people really respond to, not so much. But if, you, like if, if we see, for example, um, something really ugly coming from a competitor, that's where we take the stand down um, and, and we don't comment. So we don't really have to engage with legal so much. It's actually all the time we have. Okay. I'm sorry. But Mary's going to be around for you yes, guys to chat later. Yes, I will. So later. thank you so okay. much. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to keep talking about brand agency.